In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to show you how you can create a blurred sliding panel upon which to place text to make an interesting statement in your video project. Please look at the following example, and then we'll show you how we do this first part of the techniques involved. I have this clip. I'm going to place it on track number one. And then what I want to do is start to begin to build my blurred object that will slide across. So I need to copy the clip. I'll highlight it, do control C with the keyboard combination. Then I'll move down to track number two. With my playhead on the left side, I'll highlight track two and press control V to paste. Now I have two identical clips. We're going to use the first clip as the one that we blur. So for the moment, I'm going to make it so I cannot see clip on track number two. Let's take clip on the clip on one. I'll highlight it. Then we'll move to the effect room. I can click on the FX or press the F4 function key. I want to use a blur. So the quick way to find that would be enlarge the panel on the left, and then you have the search box in the upper right of that left panel. I'll type in the word blur. Press enter and it will give me all the blurs that I have available in my copy of PowerDirector. I'll take the Gaussian blur and drag and drop it down to track number one. Then we'll resize our panel and go back to the main entry where we see basically our video. And let's look and see what happens when we look at track number one. It is quite blurred. I want to change it slightly. So first of all, I'm going to click on that track number one, click on the effect button. I want to blur it a little more, so I'll take the degree slider at the very top, drag it a little bit to the right, and well, something around 12 I think is going to work for my purposes. So now I've adjusted the blur. Now I have to make it slide across the screen. How do I do that? I'm going to click on track number two. First of all, let's activate it. Click on track number two, the second copy. Then we're going to click on Tools, the button above the timeline, and choose the Mask Designer. We're going to use a mask, and so what I need to do is select the mask I want. I'm going to take the inside slider here, move up to the largest mask I find, which is this one here. I'll enlarge it even more to make it the full width of the screen. So right now, nothing is masked. Now I need to figure out what it's going to look like to start with. It will start with perfectly clear. So I'm going to need to position the mask. So with the playhead all the way to the left side, I'll click the diamond on position value, and that will set a, a small red keyframe for my position value. Now how long do I want the mask to come in? How many seconds or frames? Well, let's, let's use our time indicator above and let's type in, let's say, one second and 15 frames. That moves my playhead to one second and 15 frames. I'm going to right click where that playhead is, click Add Timeline Marker. And I'm going to add a marker. The marker will simply say Slide In Finished. Click on OK. So that's where the slide in will end. So I'm going to set a keyframe here. I click the diamond. And right now, nothing's changed. But we're going to change it now. So what I want to do is move my keyframe at 1 second and 15 frames. I'm going to simply take and drag with it highlighted there. And we'll go right to the middle. I've already added some markers so I know where the center of the screen is. And I'll click on OK. And now, if we play the first 1 second and 15 frames, we're going to see that that will slide across and stop at the center and remain there. There's something else I'd like to do that I've seen in another context. I'd like to put a border onto this blurred area. How do I do that? Well, to do that, we're going to use a color board. So I'm going to click on the arrow on the left side, and that will open up my color board option. So I'll click on the word color boards, and with that open, I'll take the uniform color subcategory, and I can't see anything. I need more real estate, so I'm going to give myself more room. I'll drag down and I'll take white. I'll take and drag that down and drop that into track number three. And let's lengthen the color board. Let's make it 
just plenty long for our occasion here. Right now it's 16 seconds. That's more than enough. So I have this color board that will be on the screen, but it's the wrong shape. So I'm going to double click on it. That will get into my PIP designer. And now what I need to do is make it very, very small. So I'm going to uncheck maintain aspect ratio in under the object settings in the left panel. Then we're just going to take this and squeeze it tight. Now I want it even smaller than this. So what I want to do is use instead of the slider, I'll use the width. Let's instead of 0, 1, 3, let's make it half of that 0, 0, 7. And it's nice and thin. Another thing I want to do to make it stand out is add a shadow to it. So I'll go down to the properties and click on shadow. And a black shadow is just fine. I'll go for that, but I don't want it quite as thick as three. I'll trim it down to one or 1 1.2, something like that. Press enter. Now I've got it with a shadow. Now it's stuck right in the middle of the frame. What I want to do is I want it to start and slide at the same pace as modification we have for our blur. So what I'm going to do is I still have my timeline marker here. So I'll highlight that and then we'll set a position value right here. And now our little white color board, which will be the edge at one second and 15 frames is in the middle. We're going to go back all the way to the beginning and with it there we're going to set another keyframe all I need to do is drag my mouse and drag it to the left off the side and so it starts off the screen and it should move at the same pace with the other object let's click on OK here press the home key we start out everything is nice and clear and when we press our play we see it slides across the screen with the bar and occupies the left side of the screen. Now the next thing I want to do that we'll do in the next lesson is drop four different titles on the left panel because we're bringing this on the screen so it's a nice backdrop for our titles. We'll cover that in the next exercise. Mm -hmm.